Good morning, all of you. Yesterday we studied about cardiac cycle, and today uh, we will just revise it. Cardiac cycle and followed by electrocardiogram also we will study now. Cardiac cycle. Cardiac cycle. There are three steps in cardiac cycle. There are three steps in cardiac cycle. The first step is joint diastole. The first step is joint diastole. And second step, atrial systole. Atrial systole. Atrial systole. And third step is ventricular systole. Ventricular systole. Ventricular systole. So there are three steps. First one, joint diastole. And second one, atrial systole. And third one, ventricular systole. So the first step, it is the cardiac cycle is nothing but a cyclic a contraction and relaxation of the heart, the cyclic contraction and relaxation of the heart for pumping the blood, for pumping the blood. It involves these three steps. So the first one, this is nothing but diastole relaxed state. It's nothing but relaxed state. And join means here both auricles, ventricles, both will come. So it is a relaxed state of, it is the relaxed state of, it is the relaxed state of all chambers. Relaxed state of all chambers. Relaxed state of all chambers of the heart. All chambers of the heart. Relaxed state of relaxed state of all chambers of the heart. So we know that there are uh, four important uh, chambers. Okay, right auricle, left auricle, right ventricle, and left ventricle. Okay, here there is a opening aperture. Here also there is an opening that is called aperture. Right auricular ventricular aperture, left auricular ventricular aperture. Aperture means opening. Aperture. Aperture means opening and opening. Okay, these openings are provided with the valves this openings are provided with valves even here also right ventricle to pulmonary artery and left ventricle to aorta right ventricle to pulmonary artery there is aperture left ventricle to aorta also there is an aperture so here also valves are present here also the apertures are provided with the valves apertures are provided with valves okay now what are those valves i'll tell you this is tricuspid valve tricuspid valve this is bicuspid valve bicuspid valve okay and these two are semi lunar valves semi lunar valves semi lunar valves so totally four valves you can find totally four valves okay Tricuspid, bicuspid, semilunar valves. In the joint, in the joint diastole, relaxed state of all chambers of heart. That means relaxed state of all chambers of heart, the joint diastole. During this state, during this state, the the tricuspid and bicuspid valves will open. The tricuspid and bicuspid valves will open. Now, what happens? The blood from right auricle moving starts moving into right ventricle, and the blood from left auricle starts moving into left ventricle. Got it? Yes, sir. Right. So respectively, okay, uh, the blood from right auricle to right ventricle and the left auricle to left ventricle will flows starts flowing. Okay, through the valves only. Right. And at this stage, this two semilunar valves are closed. These two semilunar valves will be closed. The semilunar valves will be closed. So this is joint diastole. 
do uh, this is nothing but a joint diastole at this time all four chambers will be relaxed state all four chambers of the heart will be in relaxed state and tricuspid and bicuspid this starts opening and the blood starts flowing from auricle to ventricle right auricle to right ventricle left auricle to left ventricle this starts moving now that is first step got it okay now second step atrial systole atrial systole atrial systole is also called auricular systole auricular systole here i already told you there is one node called sinoatrial node okay sinoatrial node sinoatrial node right we already discussed about it it is a pacemaker of the heart we discussed internal structure no right it is a pacemaker of the heart it receives 70 to 75 signals per minute right it is called pacemaker of the heart because it initiates the heartbeat by receiving the signals from the cns central nervous system it receives the signals so this san generates the action potential san generates action potential generates action potential ap that ap stands for action potential as a result as a result both the right auricle and left auricle will contract will contract the right auricle left auricle both the auricles will contract this is nothing but atrial systole atrial systole the san generates action potential and both the auricles contract this is called auricular systole or atrial systole got it and this will increase us this atrial systole will increases the flow of blood from auricles to ventricles auricles to ventricles it increases the flow of blood by 30 percentage it increases the flow of blood from auricles to ventricles by 30 percent flow of blood from auricles to ventricles will be increased 30 percent of the uh, blood flow will be increased from auricles to ventricles so this is atrial systole very simple no atrial systole is sinoatrial node generates action potential it makes it results in the systole of auricles it results in auricular systole contracts auricles contract that is called auricular systole and it leads to the increase in the flow of blood from auricles to ventricles for uh, more 30 percentage already the blood starts flowing but it increases by 30 percentage by this auricular systole atrial systole got it and uh, next third step that is ventricular systole ventricular systole ventricular systole the ventricular systole uh, very simple already san generates action potentials and auricular systole started the action potential is connected to a uh, auriculoventricular node now here one more node is present that is auriculoventricular node the same action potentials the same action potentials propagated to auriculoventricular node connected to or propagated to auriculoventricular node avn node okay and also i told av bundle right auriculoventricular bundle from where bundle of his into the walls of ventricles that distributed no bundle of this so it results throughout through the ventricular musculature right But muscles of uh, right ventricles will be uh, taking this signal right information will be passed first of all san from the san to avn and from avn to auriculoventricular bundle then bundle of his that means the musculature present in the ventricles will be completely uh, results in the contraction of the ventricles contraction of the ventricles contraction of the ventricles that is nothing but ventricular systole that is nothing but ventricular systole during this during this ventricular systole auricles already contracted right now they start relaxation during this ventricular systole auricular diastole is going to begin during ventricular systole the auricular diastole auricular diastole is going to start got it 
during the ventricular systole, the auricular diastole is going to begin. Why? Because already the auricular systole is completed and blood flown into the ventricles. Now, which valves will be opened? Which valves will be opened? Semilunar valves will open. The semilunar valves will open because due to the pressures in the ventricle, the semilunar valves will open. Then, which valves will be closed? The tricuspid and bicuspid valves will be closed. The tricuspid and bicuspid valves will be closed, and the semilunar valves will be opened. Got it? Okay. And as a result, the deoxygenated blood from right ventricle from the right ventricle enters into pulmonary artery and oxygenated blood from left ventricle enters into aorta. The deoxygenated blood from right ventricle enters into pulmonary artery and oxygenated blood from left ventricle enters into aorta. So this is what is going to happen and followed by and followed by joint diastole. That means after completion of ventricular systole, what it has to start? Ventricular diastole only, no. When contracted, definitely it has to relax. So, ventricular diastole along with auricular diastole, together called again, joint diastole going to begin. Joint diastole is going to begin. And for the atrial systole, again, ventricular systole, again, joint diastole, as the cycle goes on, repeats. This is called cardiac cycle. It's nothing but cardiac cycle. Got it. So, one heartbeat. One heartbeat, one complete heartbeat equal to one cardiac cycle. One cardiac cycle. Okay, that is cardiac cycle. And coming to one one complete uh, heartbeat includes contraction and relaxation. Contraction and relaxation. So one heartbeat will pumps out almost all. One heartbeat pumps out almost on 70 ml of pumps out 70 ml of blood. 70 ml of blood. One heartbeat can pump 70 ml of the blood. 70 ml of the blood. This is nothing but stroke volume. This volume is nothing but stroke volume. Stroke volume. One heartbeat pumps out 70 ml of the blood. This is called a stroke volume. Stroke volume. And coming to cardiac output. Cardiac output. So one beat, one beat 70 ml for one minute. How many beats? So here actually for one minute. How many beats? One heartbeat takes place per 0 0.80 of one second. That means one second less only. Less than one second only, right? Less than one second. 0 0.80. 0 0.80 we have to consider. 0 0.80 second. That's it. Because one second also not completed. Still 0 0.20 has to be completed to become one second. So this is 0 0.80. So less than one second. Like that. 0 0.80 second and you can find how many number of beats per minute for generally one minute how many seconds 60 seconds one minute 60 seconds but one heartbeat 0 0.80 seconds so one minute how many beats that means almost 72 beats got it one minute generally 60 seconds one heartbeat takes 0 0.80 seconds one heartbeat generally takes 80 0 0.80 of one second. That means for one minute, how many number of beats by heart? 72 beats, right? So cardiac output 72 beats and each beat again, each beat 70 ml, right? So 72 beats and 70 ml of minutes. That means cardiac output equal to number of beats per minute into amount of blood pumped. Amount of the blood which is pumped. Amount of the blood pumped. Okay. Number of beats per minute into amount of blood pump per minute. Uh, amount of blood pump by one beat. By one beat. Or else number of beats per minute and stroke volume. And stroke volume. Stroke volume is how much? 70 ml. And number of beats per minute how many? 70. So it results in. Almost all 
5040 ml 5040 ml which is roughly equal to 5 liters which is roughly equal to 5 liters of the blood which is roughly equal to 5 liters got it so that is cardiac output that is nothing but cardiac output the cardiac output in the you know, athlete's body the cardiac output of athletes is very high because the number of beats stroke volume will be increased right next the heart sounds during each cardiac cycle there are two sounds are produced during each cardiac cycle how many sounds are produced two sounds are produced the first sound is called lub and second sound is called a dub lub dub the first sound lub is produced due to closure of the closure of these tricuspid closure of the tricuspid closure of the tricuspid and bicuspid tricuspid and bicuspid if these valves are closed the sound which is produced is lub and the second sound is produced due to the closure of the these two semi lunar valves okay semi lunar valves semi lunar valves close means the sound which is produced is dub the sound which is produced is dub dub sound tricuspid bicuspid close means lub sound tricuspid bicuspid valves close means they will give they will give some sound that is lub sound semi lunar valves close means they will give dub sound okay so lub dub one heart will be equal to one lub plus one dub that is nothing but heart sound one heart will be equal to one lub one dub lub dub lub dub like that okay so this is about the cardiac cycle and the stroke volume and cardiac output okay cardiac output and heart sounds okay next topic is electrocardiograph 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 is commonly uh, we call it ecg electrocardiogram e for electro c for cardio g for graph electrocardiograph okay electrocardiograph 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 ecg we commonly call it ecg ECG electrocardiograph. This is an instrument which is used for obtaining the electrocardiogram. Okay, this is an instrument which is used for obtaining. This is an instrument for obtaining electrocardiogram. 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 So, instrument for obtaining the electrocardiogram. And this is the graphical representation of the. This is nothing but this electrocardiogram is nothing but. Is nothing but the graphical representation. Graphical representation. Graphical representation of the electrical activity of the heart of the electrical of the electrical electrical activity of the heart during cardiac cycle during cardiac cycle okay so during cardiac cycle our heart will show some electrical activity heart shows the electrical activity and during that it is going to produce some graphical representation when we record it when we record it it will give some graphical representation so that is nothing but electrocardiogram and recording that obtaining that electrocardiogram is nothing but electrocardiograph machine got it both are same electrocardiograph is an instrument to obtain electrocardiogram what is electrocardiogram the graphical representation that's it okay so getting the graphical representation by electrocardiograph what is the graphical representation electrocardiogram 
got it to get an ecg to get an ecg the patient is connected to the machine first of all the machine the patient has to be connected with the machine with the three electrical leads the patient suppose here machine one two three three body the body will be connected with the three electrical leads three electrical leads three electrical leads the machine will be connected to the body with the help of with the help of three electrical leads three electrical leads one electrical lead to wrist one is towards wrist and other towards the left ankle okay another also wrist okay and left ankle left ankle okay one to each wrist these two electrical leads will be attached towards the each wrist each wrist and one more one more electrical lead is towards the left ankle left ankle and this three three electrical leads will be connected to the machine which consisting of a monitor monitor to, to monitor the heart activity to monitor the heart activity these electrical leads will be connected to the machine which monitor the heart activity and for a detailed evaluation of uh, the heart's function for a detailed evaluation of uh, heart functioning multiple leads are attached to the chest region multiple region also they can attach okay the electrical leads the electrical leads can be connected to the chest region also to uh, know more about the electrocardiogram okay and how this electrocardiogram will be uh, graphically represented uh, we will have a small graphical representation electrocardiogram for the normal person healthy person how it will be okay for the normal person and healthy person how it will So this is the first wave. This is the first wave. And this is one more. Second wave. And uh, the third one you are going to see now. Okay, third one. And fourth one. Okay. So this is the normal and healthy persons. Uh, electrocardiogram healthy person's electrocardiogram we will study okay here the waves are first wave p wave this is first wave p wave and qrs wave this is qrs wave points you observe this is one wave that's it that is one wave this is qrs wave qrs wave qrs wave this is t wave that is nothing but t wave this is nothing but a repolarization getting into relaxed state so no need of giving any no need to assign any key okay any signs now i think you understood this analyzing this so this p wave represents this p wave, p wave represents auricular systole this p wave represents auricular systole auricular systole auricular system and whereas the qrs represents the qrs represents depolarization of the ventricles that means ventricular systole ventricular systole ventricular systole the depolarization of the ventricles depolarization of the ventricles depolarization of the ventricles next here auricular systole means auricular depolarization auricular depolarization auricular depolarization and the depolarization means systole only the so systole leads to depolarization systole is nothing but depolarization here okay so depolarization p wave auricular systole qrs wave ventricular systole and this t wave represents the t wave is going to be represented as the repolarization the p wave represents the repolarization repolarization the t wave represents repolarization okay repolarization of uh, 
ventricles okay repolarization of the ventricles okay ventricles repolarization of the ventricles so that is uh, this is the proper uh, representation of the electrocardiogram proper representation of the electrocardiogram p wave qrs wave t wave p wave is nothing but auricular depolarization that means auricular systole qrs wave means ventricular systole depolarization of ventricles and repolarization of ventricles and followed by auricles also going to happen so this is nothing but a normal ecg representation normal ecg representation suppose you may get a question sir what happens if this electrocardiogram is not uh, getting properly if it is deviating from the standard this is standard okay if it is deviating from from the standard representation what will happen it indicates it indicates the abnormality or the disease any disease okay it indicates the abnormality related to heart only it, it indicates the abnormality abnormal beats only right if, if that is not being represented as like this definitely there is some abnormality okay so that is easy thing. now we are going to study one small topic that is double circulation double circulation double circulation in the sense the blood flows through the heart for twice the blood flows through the heart for twice right blood flows through the heart for twice that's why double circulation suppose fishes you take you take fishes blood flows through the heart only for once blood heart also blood auricle ventricle gills over only once single circulation that is but in our body double circulation why because there are two auricles two ventricles right auricle to right ventricle the blood has to move left auricle to left ventricle the blood has to move that means the blood is flowing through the heart for how many times two times so that's why it is double circulation now we are going to study about it double circulation double circulation double circulation the circulation of blood through the heart through the heart for two times for two times to complete one particular circuit to complete one particular circuit it includes two steps it includes two steps it includes two steps first one pulmonary pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation second one systemic circulation systemic circulation pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation okay so coming to pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation the circulation between the lungs and heart circulation between the lungs and heart circulation between lungs and heart okay clear no circulation this lungs to heart circulation that's it okay next the systemic circulation heart to do various body parts systemic circulation means heart to do various body parts heart to various body parts so this circulation is nothing but the circulation of blood from heart to different body parts is nothing but systemic circulation so now what is the pathway we will discuss what is the pathway okay so very simple first lungs to heart means lungs to heart first of all the lungs has to purify the blood right the lungs is purifying the blood only because it is taking oxygen and oxygen is added to blood right and from the lungs the blood is passed on to heart then from the heart to body organs the blood is pumped right because it's a pumping organ okay so deoxygenated blood from right ventricle enters into pulmonary artery and pulmonary artery supplies blood to lungs and in the lungs the blood becomes oxygenated blood and from pulmonary vein through pulmonary vein it reaches left auricle this is 
pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation now i'll tell you suppose this is a right ventricle right ventricle this is pulmonary artery this is lungs right ventricle pulmonary artery lungs blood is purified in this of deoxygenated blood becomes oxygenated blood again this is nothing but pulmonary vein pulmonary vein pulmonary vein this is pulmonary artery right okay deoxygenated blood is carried to the lungs and uh, from the lungs the oxygenated blood oxygenated blood oxygenated blood is pumped from the left artery but but it left artery okay so this circulation is nothing but uh, pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation that is pulmonary circulation only okay starts from here start from right ventricle the pathway you observe right ventricle to the deoxygenated blood enters into pulmonary artery and deoxygenated blood supply to lungs and from the lungs to left artery the oxygenated blood comes this is pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation now coming to systemic circulation you know you can guess now you can guess left ventricle aorta arteries arterioles capillaries tissues and again from the tissues deoxygenated blood deoxygenated blood venules veins vena cava and right auricle got it very simple okay i will write, i will draw here the flow chart i will draw uh, identify the chambers right auricle okay right auricle only no first i am writing right auricle okay uh, here I am writing left ventricle. I am writing because it starts from here, right? Okay. Aorta. Aorta. Okay. Aorta. Next. Branches of aorta called arterioles. Arterioles. Aorta branches, arterioles only. No. Then capillaries. Then capillaries. then capillaries just branched representation of drawing capillaries and then and then body tissues body tissues left ventricle which blood is supplied oxygenated blood only no oxygenated blood from left ventricle enters into aorta then arterioles then capillaries then tissues right and again in the tissues which blood is produced now deoxygenated blood right deoxygenated blood from the tissues deoxygenated blood from the tissues deoxygenated blood okay venules venules next veins veins because branches of veins are called venules venules are distributed to tissues and tissues will sends deoxygenated blood into venules again venules sends deoxygenated blood to veins so all happens next vena cava vena cava the largest vein i'll write the spelling here vena cava vena cava okay this deoxygenated blood from tissues okay i'm writing here deoxygenated blood i'll write deoxygenated blood from tissues deoxygenated blood enters into venules and from venules to veins and veins to vena cava and finally right auricle the deoxygenated blood reaches right auricle so this is systemic circulation this is nothing but systemic circulation okay so the double circulation is equal to pulmonary circulation plus systemic circulation this is nothing but double circulation and since our heart is exhibiting the circulation for two times our uh, heart is called double circuit heart double circuit heart okay and the systemic circulation will provides the systemic circulation you observe here 
left ventricle, the oxygenated blood, aorta, arterioles, capillaries, tissues. The systemic circulation will provide oxygen, nutrients, and other substances to the tissues. And what blood will be comes out? Deoxygenated blood. That means carbon dioxide will comes out and other harmful uh, substances for the elimination. Okay, so that is systemic circulation. So hope you understood the difference between uh, pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. Pulmonary and systemic circulation. Hope you have understood with the help of a flow charts. Okay. Next, memory maps. These are memory maps. Okay. Next, uh, we are going to study two different uh, uh, two different associated circulatory systems. One is hepatic portal system, and the other one. The coronary circulatory system, hepatic portal system, and coronary circulatory system. We have to study that. I'm erasing this. Just once you look at it left ventricle, aorta, arterioles, capillaries, tissues, venules, veins, vena cava, again right border. Okay. Our circulatory system and not only circulatory system, the organ systems of human body are uh, very incredible. Okay. Their existence, their performance, really incredible. Okay. One system is well connected to the other system and with the high coordination within the systems, right? Next, hepatic portal system. Hepatic portal system. Hepatic portal system. Hepatic means liver, no? Hepatic liver. So, related to that, now you will understand what is hepatic portal system. Now I'm going to explain. This is a system which includes the hepatic portal vein which consisting of which consisting of hepatic portal vein hepatic portal vein this is a specialized vein which is present in the body which carries blood from this carries the blood from okay this hepatic portal vein will carries the blood from intestine to the liver intestine to the liver intestine to liver uh, generally delivers any um, toxic materials generally okay any toxic uh, substances if present after the digestion process this hepatic portal vein will supplies that blood to the liver okay so hepatic portal vein is supplying it is it is a specialized way that supplies blood from the intestine to liver, intestine to liver, okay. Generally, okay, this is the important way, one of the important way which supplies, uh, which brings the connection from intestine to liver, okay. Liver, what liver will perform? So you may get a question, sir, why liver, why it has to supply blood to liver? This liver consisting of a specialized function called detoxification, detoxification. And further, if any metabolisms are there through liver also, the metabolisms can happen. Suppose if you take any drug, it has to undergo some uh, hepatic metabolism also, it will exhibit the drugs. So just like that. So the intestine to liver, there is a vein that is called hepatic portal vein, hepatic portal vein. Next, one more system, coronary circulatory system. Coronary circulatory system coronary circulatory system coronary circulatory system means it is a system of uh, coronary vessels coronary vessels to and from the cardiac muscle okay cardiac muscle cardiac muscle heart okay because the cardiac muscle, if undergoes contraction and relaxation only, it results in heartbeat. It results in heartbeat. So, cardiac muscle is very essential for the heartbeat, right? Heartbeat 
will be exhibited by this cardiac muscle or cardiac muscle only exhibits contraction relaxation thereby pumping of blood right but this cardiac muscle also a tissue right muscle tissue it is muscle muscle tissue so it has to be supplied with oxygen and nourishment from the heart from the heart so that blood vessel is coronary artery coronary artery and from cardiac muscles to the heart coronary vein coronary vein coronary vein okay coronary vein will takes a deoxygenated blood from heart to oh, sorry coronary vein takes a deoxygenated blood from cardiac muscle to heart and heart will supplies oxygen and nutrients to cardiac muscle through coronary artery coronary artery so this system is nothing but coronary circulatory system coronary circulatory system coronary circulatory system okay next now the one more small topic regulation of cardiac activity regulation of cardiac activity so hope you understood these two systems and now we are going to study regulation of heart activity very simple topic regulation of cardiac activity heart activity regulation of regulation of heart heart activity regulation of heart activity the normal activities of the heart are auto regulated by the nodal tissues sinoatrial node auriculoventricular node sinoatrial node auriculoventricular node okay normal activities and coming to the regulation of cardiac activity the brain consisting of hind brain the hind brain consisting of medulla oblongata medulla oblongata the hind brain consisting of medulla oblongata the medulla oblongata will regulates the cardiac activity regulates the cardiac activity okay regulates cardiac activity regulates the cardiac activity cardiac activity the medulla oblongata of the hind brain present in the hind brain will regulates the cardiac activity cardiac activity okay and through the autonomous nervous system through autonomous nervous system ans through autonomous nervous system sympathetic nerves there are specialized sympathetic nerves which belongs to the autonomous nervous system will increases the heart rate the sympathetic nerves belongs to this uh, autonomous nervous system okay the ans consisting of the ans consisting of sympathetic nerves sympathetic nerves which will increases the heart beat which will increases the heart beat okay the sympathetic nerves belongs to the ans will increases the heart beat increases the rate of heart beat and parasympathetic nerves the ans also consisting of parasympathetic nerve para sympathetic all right para sympathetic nerves which will reduces the rate of heart beat reduces heart beat reduces heart beat okay so completely the medulla oblongata is controlling the controlling the cardiac activity by ans what is that ans consisting of ans is nothing but autonomous nervous system there are two important nerves sympathetic nerves parasympathetic nerves which belongs to a autonomous nervous system these two nerves only constitutes autonomous nervous system sympathetic nerves will increases the rate of heart beat and parasympathetic nerves will decreases the rate of heart beat so conduction of uh, action potential including all not only heart beat conduction of action potentials and also cardiac output also thereby cardiac output will be controlled right next 
there is a certain hormones called uh, adrenaline nor adrenaline which are secreted from adrenal gland adrenaline nor adrenaline adrenaline and nor adrenaline nor adrenaline which are secreted from adrenal gland which are secreted from adrenal glands adrenal glands okay adrenal gland secretes uh, this adrenaline nor adrenaline which will increases the heartbeat which will increases heartbeat increases the heartbeat okay thereby cardiac output will be increased thereby cardiac output also will be increased okay this is all about the cardiac cycle and cardiac output double circulation and hepatic portal system coronary circulatory system and regulation of heartbeat totally six topics we have completed today okay so tomorrow we will study about lymphatic system if you have any doubts you can